Oh my god, these things came in and took away all of our good memories and only left us with sour ones? Or are the RuneScape Revenants the Dementors? Oh my god. Alright guys, before we hop in, the Discord channel as always is going to be in the description if you want to chat with me or anyone else. We have a few dozen active members in it and it's been really fun talking to you guys and you can also suggest ideas for a new video. As always guys, if any of these video clips interest you or you want to see the source video, they will all be included in the description below along with an explanation of what they are so they can be easily found. Without further ado, let's hop right in and get into the video. Before we dive right in, I have some very important information about the topic. This information could really refresh people's memories, maybe they took a break, maybe they temporarily quit because of the free trade removal and the wilderness being turned on its head at the time. I don't blame them. But this is for the players who might not remember, like the full context, as well as new viewers on the channel who only played old school and never played pre-EOC RuneScape. Let me take you guys back to December 10th of 2007. Jagex is actively battling against real world traders and they had an idea that involved two things. First part of this controversial two-step plan was to get rid of unbalanced trade. Unbalanced trade would be, for example, you trading a dragon longsword to your buddy in return for nothing. That's an unbalanced trade. So it impacted real world trading because the person who buys the gold can no longer have the gold farmer trade them 10, 20 mil for junk items or nothing. All trades had to be even value or around even value based on grand exchange prices at the time. Jagex thought ahead and their second step of this two part plan was to totally reinvent the wilderness. They would make it to where you could no longer attack other players in the wilderness and instead made the bounty hunter crater where pvp could exist and still take place pvp worlds would not come out until 2008 so bounty hunter was now the only option for pvping where you could get another player's loot they did this because gold farmers would have simply just went to the wilderness and had the person who bought the gold from them just kill them for their loot which would be coins and real world trading would still occur. So this was Jagex's second part of their plan. For all those curious, the real world trading still happened to a much lesser extent within Bounty Hunter, but since the Bounty Hunter crater was much, much smaller than the wilderness, they were often intercepted by PKers and killed for their gold. Whereas before Bounty Hunter, you know, PKers always existed and they could always intercept the gold and make it to where the gold buyer didn't get it and the real world trader lost the gold, but the wilderness was so big that the gold farmers would just go to a remote section, like a remote corner of the wilderness, and just die to the person who bought it from them. And it would still occur very often, and PKers weren't always around to intercept them and get rid of them. So now that we have a little bit of a backstory on why the revenants were introduced and why the wilderness was the way it was around this time, let's dive into the revenants themselves. So first and foremost, Revenants had access to all three combat styles. Another interesting mechanic they had was they would adapt to whatever prayer you were using. So for example, if you were using Protect from Magic, they would attempt to range or melee you. They were also capable of healing themselves of poison and simulating eating food. If their HP dropped to a certain threshold, they would rapidly start healing. They could also teleblock players, which is something they cannot do nowadays. Their ranged attack was also capable of freezing a player for a handful of seconds at a time. The Revenants also had designated spawn locations scattered all over the wilderness. Once they spawned, they would roam all over the wilderness looking for an unlucky victim. Once they found their unlucky victim, they would hunt them relentlessly. Now the Revenants could not run, so they could easily be outran if you could get away from them like you didn't try and fight them and you didn't get frozen repeatedly. So if you were pretty well equipped with a few lobsters or a few pieces of food and there was only one of them on you in single way, you could simply just run away, they were just kind of an annoyance. However, if you were ill-prepared, they had a very high chance of killing you by freezing you repeatedly and chasing you 20 plus wilderness levels and constantly attacking you. Their attack range was pretty wide, I distinctly remember being able to be attacked off screen by them, and they were pretty relentless when it came to pursuing you even if you outran them often chasing players 15 to 20 plus wilderness levels before giving up. The main goal of the Revenants was to still have that element of danger in the wilderness and to try and imitate PKers as closely as possible. In my eyes, they were successful at this, but also failed in some areas. So in one of the areas they were successful in was multi-combat areas. If you were killing the Chaos Elemental, for example, even as a high-level experienced player, it was very dangerous at the time. This is because there was a Revenant spawn right near Rogue's Castle, and depending on the generator, it could spawn five Revenant Knights or a mixture of Oryx Knights and a Revenant Dragon. And you would have the Chaos Elemental on you at the same time, which is also capable of hitting in the mid-20s. 
Then you had Revenant Knights, let's say four or five of them, all capable of also hitting 20s. And then you throw in the Chaos Elemental's teleportation attack while you're trying to get away on top of the Revenant's freezing attack, and your trip is either going to be cut short or you are going to die to them. Other than that, I would say the only danger is running into them in other multi-combat areas or just being very, very ill-prepared while you're doing a clue scroll or mining rune rocks, for example. Those are really the only instances where I found them truly threatening and not just a minor annoyance. Because for most players, mid-tier and high-tier players, they were just an annoyance. Their drop table consisted of coins, nothing, and an uncharged amulet of glory if you were extremely lucky, which was not worth the supplies used in order to kill them. So after that last narration I just did, kind of discussing their drops briefly and how they weren't worth it, they still weren't worth it, but I did find a revenant hunting guide from 2008. People took up the hobby of hunting the revenants and seeing what they dropped because back then we had like Tippet, Rune HQ, that sort of stuff for our drop tables. And even if monsters had a drop table listed there, Sometimes it just wasn't accurate because it doesn't actually pull user drop data kind of like RuneWiki does now. So they were less accurate, but these were the actual drop tables back then. You can see right here the Revenant Demon, Rune Longsword, Level 2 or Medium Clue for those of you who aren't like super old. That's what Level 2 means, Medium Tier. Amulet of Glory, and then you see the Orc. Ring of Wealth, Obby Cape, Amulet of Glory, Dragon Dagger. I'll say this right now, the only thing I ever got off of these guys was an Amulet of Glory, and I think I got the regular Dragon Dagger. But other than that, I never got anything, and I killed a few hundred of these. Revenant Dark Beast, all it drops for some reason to glory. Revenant Knight, you know, you can kind of just see their drops. Revenant Dragon obviously had the best drops. I never got anything off of them, but you can see here, D-Skirt, Obby Cape. Dragon Dagger, Dragon Med, Rune Plate Body, Dragon Longsword, and Amulet of Glory. And they've got kind of other tips and stuff too. Really interesting looking back on this. As a funny side note, players at the time speculated that the Revenant Knight was capable of dropping a Ceridoman Sword worth around 10 million GP at that time. Which was just simply not true, but some people believed it and tried their hand at hunting Revenants in hopes of getting that Ceridoman Sword because we didn't have access to drop tables as easily as we do now. For free-to-play players and low and mid-tier players that just weren't as experienced, the Revenants were actually seen as pretty damn scary. During my research, I found video clips of low-level players being chased up into Rogue's castle and up the stairs because they were too scared to come down the stairs in fear of getting killed by the clan of Revenants, which was pretty damn hilarious. Another interesting behavior of Revenants is, let's say you were getting the best of a Revenant, let's say you were a mid-tier player who was maybe kind of struggling against a Revenant, but you were getting the best of it and you were about to kill it, well, while it's doing that healing animation, it's not hitting you. So if there's other revenants around even in single combat, they will PJ you off of the revenant you were fighting and now you have to deal with a fresh revenant that has, you know, all of its supplies and full health. During the time span that the revenants were prominent in the wilderness, you had many games such as Clan Wars and eventually stealing creation out in the wilderness. This led to some pretty funny moments where players either got lured outside trying to fight them or trying to move between mini games, and you would see them get piled in multi-combat and killed by revenants that intercepted them. Once PvP worlds were released in 2008, on those select PvP worlds, revenants were not present in the wilderness. Revenants would continue this pattern of annoying players all the way up until February 1st of 2011, where they were removed from the wilderness. An iconic event took place just before that though on January 27th of the same year. It was known as the Banish the Revenants event, and it was held by moderators as well as normal players. They gathered together in a large group and stormed the wilderness and attacked any Revenant they saw. This was to symbolize and commemorate the removal of the Revenants in their current state. So if you couldn't tell from these clips, this event was iconic for sure, but it wasn't exactly eventful. Most of the time they spent just traversing throughout the wilderness looking for Revenants, but the thing about Revenants is they only seem to spawn when they could cause you inconvenience. If you were actually looking for revenants they usually didn't spawn so literally most of this event was just them walking around a few revenants did spawn but they were quickly dispatched based on the amount of players they had at one point like in high level wilderness and multi-combat a revenant did spawn people got kind of excited but the excitement died down when they saw it was just a peer fiend and then a bunch of low levels got on it and dispatched it. It's important to note that Revenants were not removed entirely on February 1st of 2011, but simply moved to something called the Revenant Caves or Ferenthry Dungeon. They would be given PvP armor drops as well as PvP statuette drops. 
This in turn made them still a very valuable monster to kill, generating millions of GP and profit for multiple players. To this day, revenants are still located in this cave even on RuneScape 3. You can still fight them today and still get the same drops, including a Stadius Warhammer that's worth 82 million gold apparently on there now. But anyways guys, the original revenants were a very iconic part of RuneScape history, kind of a dark part of RuneScape history for some with the uh, removal of free trade and stuff, but some of us probably have good memories about them. But anyways guys, that's going to about do it for me. This is the RuneScape Historian checking out. See ya.